Welcome to homework for lesson 20. This is module 4 of lesson 2. Get your name on here first. It's going to be the easiest one for you to do, so don't skip it. And we're practicing vertical addition. Uh, I'll go over just a little briefly of the kinds of mistakes that tend to get made, and at the end there's a question where you have to figure out a mistake that somebody made. So I'll start off with the first thing is this. This is the first mistake that's often made, which is you've written it set it up right, and the ones digits are on top of each other, and the tens digits are on top of each other, and everything's in alignment, but there's no room up here for you to get, if you have to bundle anything, there's no room for you to write that you've bundled it. And that's really important to have that. So if you can, you can't always think of it, and because then what happens is you end up having to make marks that are up here. Uh, so if you can help it, don't do that. Give yourself a little bit of room. And, and really for addition and for subtraction, in both of those, you're going to need room above above your, uh, your, uh, your either your menu end or your top add end. So give yourself some room. You don't need a lot of room, but you need some. And make sure... Uh, I just want to use another color to show this. Um, make sure your digits are lined up. And by that, I mean we're working in columns here. So what we want, and you don't have to draw these columns in yourself, but sometimes people do in the beginning, and it helps them make sure that they're doing it right. This is just like an HTO chart, but with numbers in it. right? You want to have your 10s all on top of each other and your 1s all on top of each other. Now there's just two there's just not enough room to write all that. So if you can avoid it, if you don't if you can get by without having to write those columns in yourself, it makes it easier. But you got to keep that uh if you have trouble keeping them lined up and keeping it in mind that you're adding ones to ones and tens to tens, uh you definitely got to because this is one of the other mistakes you see a lot is this. And now you're adding ones to, now this is, this should be a one, a ones digit, and it should be added to the other ones digit, but now it looks like it's in the tens place. And you're going to add a tens to tens, and you're, this is now, this should be a 30, but now it's 300, because it's over here in the hundreds place. And that's just the, that's what happens. It really messes up the numbers you're adding together. And it becomes especially important when you're adding more than two numbers at a time. Okay, so enough of that. Let's just add. Always start with the ones digits first. Mentally, you're used to starting with the largest place values, the hundreds or the tens. But on paper, you have to do with the ones digits first, because otherwise, if you have to bundle anything, you end up having to do the tens digits over again. And this is how, because you look at this, 1 plus 9, that's 10. Mark that 10 up here. Make sure it's right above the other tens. Don't put it over here. Hold on a second. Don't put it over here uh, in the middle. Don't put it over here in the middle because now I can't tell if it's a 1 or a 10. And when it comes time to add it to the 10s, I won't add it to the 10s because I won't see it. It's got to be, it's got to look like another 10 because it is another 10. And now I see, okay, I have a 1, a 4, and a 3 to add up for my 10s digits. That's 8. 80. And when you bundle, you draw the chips. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 tens and a 1. For addition, you draw both add-ins, 1, 2, 3, or as many add-ins as you have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Be careful how you draw these, because if you leave like a little speck and you, and you leave that as a dot, then you may not count it. It may look like a piece of eraser dust or something, and when time comes to count your ones or your tens or whatever, you may not notice that it's a, a digit you're supposed to count. So make them big enough so you can really see that they're something you're supposed to count. And they don't have to be huge. Just make sure they're bigger than just a, a, a speck of dirt. All right, so here I have nine, and I need one more to make ten, so I'm going to circle all of them and draw it here as a ten, and then I can count all my tens. I have zero ones, and I have eight tens, eighty. All right, 54, 
26, add these together. Looking at my ones digits, 4 plus 6, that's a 10. Zero ones, and there's my 10 right above the other 10s. Now I can add all my 10s together. That's a 5 and a 2 and a 1. So that's 7 and 1 more is 8. 80. When I draw it, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. 26 is 1, 2. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ones. Leave yourself a little bit of space in between these chips because you're going to need room to draw lines in between them sometimes. And it, it makes it hard. It can make it hard to draw your line in between two chips without writing over them, and that can cause problems with counting errors later on. I'll show you what I mean when it comes up. Zero ones here. Count all our tens, and there's eight of them. Eighty. Ninety-six plus thirty-nine. Okay, ninety-six, thirty-nine. Six and nine are fifteen, so that's ten and five. There we go. And this nine and one makes a ten. Three more is thirteen. Thirteen tens is a hundred and three tens. So I'm going to put the three tens down here where the tens go, and the hundred goes up here. It doesn't have any hundreds to add to it in this problem, but in other problems there may be hundreds. So I just want to make sure you see where this why that one can go there. Because it's a hundred, it's the only hundred you have. There are no other hundreds to add to it. So we just count it. All right, 96. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then 39. One, two, three, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now here's one of the things I was talking about before. If this was really tight, and uh, I have this nine, I want to circle one more to bundle it to make a ten. If I circled like this, you see what happened is like this guy right here, he just got kind of written over. And now it comes time to count. I'm not going to see him, and I'm just going. To, I'm only going to count these four ones. But he should be left out. If you don't have enough room, that's going to happen. So be careful when you draw these circles to bundle chips in that you don't write over other chips. That leads to counting mistakes. And now I can see there's five ones left here. And now tens. I know this is a five group and four. It needs one more. And this is where it really gets difficult. Sometimes it just loop one more chip in to make a group of 10. But that's why you need to have a little bit of room in between those chips in case that happens. There's your 100. There's the three tens I had left over and there's the 100. So I have the two answers from two different methods. Same answer. That means I probably got it right both times. All right. 84. If they don't match, then you go back and check it and look for a mistake because you probably, they can't both be right, so you probably made a mistake in one of them. You got to figure out which one's right and which one's wrong. Uh, 4 plus 9 is 13. That's three ones and a 10. 7 and 8 is 15. One more is 16. That's six tens and a hundred. There's our hundreds. 163. You see how fast that is compared to the chip method. Especially if you know your uh, your single digit uh, addition. If you know like four plus nine, eight plus seven, you know all of those, uh, or you can you or you can figure them out really quickly in your head. Then uh, it it really helps this vertical method. You can add up huge numbers really quickly on paper, and it's faster than showing the explanation or showing any other kind of work on paper. It's the best way to show it. So here we're going to draw eighty four one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and seventy nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then nine more. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one of these guys here. Careful to make a ten. 
and now I need two of these. This is an eight up here, so I need two more to make a ten here carefully. Loop in a ten. <clears throat> that makes a hundred. Now I can see I have three ones left here. And I have six one six tens here, and I have one hundred hundred sixty three both times. That's what I should have. Sixty five plus ninety seven. This one is really easy to do mentally, because you can see the ninety seven only needs three more to be a hundred. So it's going to be one hundred sixty two, and you could just write it. Okay, one hundred sixty two. I know what it's going to be, All right? But I can tell right here. You didn't do the vertical method, and this is about practicing the vertical method, not about solving it quickly in your head. So please take the time to practice what you're supposed to be practicing with this homework. Please. 5 plus 7 is 12. That's a 10 and two ones. And now we have, oh, this 1 and this 9 makes a 10, and 6 more, 16. So that's 16, but it's 16 tens. So there, there are no hundreds to add it to, so we just count it, 162. And then to draw it, 65, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 97, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <coughs> This five group just needs another five group. See the benefit of drawing five group rows? It makes it really easy to bundle tens when you have five group rows that match like that. All right, and then I'm going to draw this guy. Now, I, since I know I have a nine down here, I'm just going to make it easy on myself and make it a ten by adding that there. And so that's a hundred. So I have two ones six tens and one hundred. Now we have uh, for this for each box here find and circle two numbers that add up to 150. So we need two numbers that add up to 150. Now we may may take some experimentation here to figure out some guessing and checking. You may do something like oh let's add this 67 and 73. And you can show your work here, or if you have one-sided pages, you can do it on the back of the first page. All right, that's 10, 1, and that's uh, 13, 14, that's 140. So 67 and 73 is not enough. So it would have to be, well, 83 is 10 more, and I need 10 more. So these two right here. And I could do it just to check, add the 67 and the 83. 7, 3, 10, 1, 14, that's 15, that's 150. You've got to have some proof somewhere around here or on the back of the other page. Now, this adds up to 150. We need, we know the 92 and the 62 won't work together because we'll have four ones left, and we need the twos and the eights to put those together. Uh, 92 is almost 100. 48 is almost 50, so that's not going to be quite big enough. But maybe the 92 and the 58 will work. Let's try that. Let's see. That's a 10. 10 and 5. Yeah. So it's the 92 and the 58. All right. Now the last one here. These all end in 5s. So... We're just going to have to look for the two fives will make a 10, right? So then we need the one, the tens digits to add up to 14 because that'll be 14 tens. And one more 10 from putting the ones together will make it 15 tens. So we need ones digits that add up to 14. Seven and six is 13. That won't work. Seven and seven is 14. That works. So this is, we need the 75 here and the 75 there. And just to prove it, don't forget, don't forget that. you got to show those marks when you're using the vertical method. You have to show it. 14 and 515, so there, 150.